Hello everyone. I am Mahavish Nafiz, a PhD scholar at CSIR IGIB. I welcome you to this lecture series of bioinformatics for schoolers. So today the topic of the lecture is concept of gene, gene organization and its regulation. So you all must be familiar with these robots. All the robots, they have a certain code and instructions that guide them how to do and when to do. So it is these instructions or codes within the robot that make them friendly or that make them destructive or evil. Same goes for the computer as well. So computer also has some code or instructions fed into it, which makes up its software. And that software, it determines how a computer will function, how it will process that information. Now the question is, do we also have some code? Yes, we do. We do have a code in our body and that code is DNA. So DNA, it is the code of life. This DNA, it's not the code or instructions for human beings only. It is the code for every particular living uh, organism. Be it tiny bacteria on your hands, um, insects, plants, or us human beings, or giant elephants, even the large dinosaurs. So it is the DNA that is the instructions for all these organisms. And it is the difference in the DNA that makes a dinosaur different from that of the bacteria. So this DNA, it determines what an organism is going to be and how it's going to be. Now, if we look about, uh, on the DNA, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And it is guarded inside the nucleus of the cell. So it is um, very important for us. Right. So uh, it is the, basically the instruction manual for us. So we need to keep it protected. So to protect it, it is present inside the nucleus of the cell. And within this nucleus, it is tightly packed into chromosomes. So uh, this DNA, it is tightly packed inside the nucleus uh, in the form of chromosomes. So in humans, we have 46 different chromosomes, out of which 23 comes from our mom and 23 comes from our father. Now, if we look upon its structure, DNA has a very beautiful structure. So it, if you can see, it has a backbone, which is known as a sugar phosphate backbone. And on this backbone, there are four different chemicals present and those chemicals are known as bases. So DNA has four different types of bases, adenine, thiamine, guanine and cytosine. And these four bases, they pair together in, with the, in the DNA. And this pairing, it results in the double helical structure of the DNA. And this pairing, it's very specific, like adenine always pairs with thiamine, and cytosine will always pair with guanine. There is no case where cytosine will pair with adenine or cytosine will pair with thymine. A will also uh, always pair with T and C will always pair with G. And this specific pairing, it results in the final double helical structure of the DNA. So this DNA, it was revealed by a group of scientists like Rosalind Franklin, Morris Wilkins, and Watson and Crick. So uh, Morris and uh, Morris Wilkins and Franklin, they had performed some experiments. And those experiments, the data from that, they were analyzed by Watson and Crick, and they finally gave the structure, which we know today as double helical structure of the DNA. Okay, so now the question is, what does this DNA actually do? It is the instruction manual, but what actually it does? So it is the uh, DNA that makes up who we are. It determines our identity, like what is going to be our eye color, whether uh, there is going to be a dimple or no dimple on our face, what's going to be our height, whether we are going to be tall or we are going to be short how our hair pattern will be, 
it whether it will be curly or straight what is uh, what's going to be the hair color and whether we are going to our uh, whether we are we will be tongue rollers or not and so much more these are just to name a few what a dna can do and there is lot lot more than this what a dna does now that we know that dna is the instruction manual so this instruction manual for organism it's really complex it has very um, uh, it contains numerous elements and uh, to understand the uh, role of each and every element it is uh, it's very dif difficult luckily the life and its forms are really well organized like it's organized from the very basic dna which is organized into more compact chromosomes and those chromosomes then make up the entire genome of the organism which i guess you have learned about in previous lectures also now we will see what are the genes so if we uh, compare dna as the instruction manual book so dna is our entire book so within this book there are various chapters and those chapters can be compared with the chromosomes and within those chapters there are various sentences and those sentences can be regarded as the genes so the genes are the part of the chapters genes are the part of the chromosomes that have a meaningful information consider we need to make some cookies so for making the cookies we need a recipe similarly for making some treat or for making some feature for example for making a, a, our height for making our eye color there is a recipe within our body so that recipe is known as gene and for our eye color there is one particular recipe and for hair color there is separate recipe and so much more and these separate recipes these separate instructions are known as genes so there are different genes for different traits so likewise if we compare entire genome as a book it has 46 different chapters that is 46 different chromosomes and within those chromosomes it has different genes or different recipes now we have seen that gene is a part of the dna that has a meaningful information now if we go about its definition gene is defined as the basic physical and functional unit of heredity and in humans we have about 20000 to 25000 different genes if we look at its size the size varies some genes can be really small and some can be really really large like we have some recipes which can be uh, half a page long and some pages can be as long as 10 pages similarly some genes are really small and some are large so what is meant by the unit of inheritance so basically genes are passed from one generation to the next like they have passed from your grandparents who then pass them to your parents your parents pass them to you and you will pass to your next generation and the process will go on this process of in uh, process of transmission of genes is known as genetic inheritance so for each gene we have two versions two different copies and those two copies are known as alleles so we have two uh, genes two copies of the genes for eye color and one copy we get from our mother and one copy we inherit from our father so this is the reason we resemble our parents your height may be matching with that your mother your eye color will be matching with your father this is because you have got your height gene from your mother and eye color gene from your father now that we know that these genes are the instruction now the question is how do these instructions they make the final desired trait final desired outcome in us consider we have a recipe so for making this uh, instructions written instructions into the final product what we do we need to go through the instructions we need to read the instructions similarly 
we have these written instructions we have these genes within us so to make this gene into the final product here in case consider it's a dimple chin so for converting this instructions into the final product this gene has to be read so we will now see how these genes are read consider a sentence so for a sentence for reading it the uh, there is a mar demarcation that a capital letter it starts the sentence and ends with a full stop similarly for reading a gene there is also uh, also a start side and a stop side the start signal where the uh, gene is start to be read that is known as promoter and where a gene ends it is known as the terminator promoter it is analogous to the capital letter in a sentence and terminator it is analogous to the full stop of the sentence so within the full stop and the capital letter it uh, contains the instructions for a particular trait now how do uh, how are these uh, genes organized within our genome so you must be familiar with these multi subject notebooks wherein there are multiple uh, wide pages separated by some colored pages so these white pages are the ones that we can actually write upon so these white pages are the actual functional part and these colored pages they are just the dividers they are separators uh, present uh, within the book similarly within our gene we have our uh, functional part separated by a, a non functional part so the functional part that can actually contain the instructions they are known as exons and within the two exons lie the separators or dividers which are known as introns so in our genes uh, we have exons separated by the introns now the question is since dna is present inside the nucleus now how is the instructions from the nucleus carried to the cell how is this instructions read so that a cell can make a particular trait so there is a molecule called mrna consider there's a library which houses a most expensive book and the, uh, that expensive book, book cannot be lent to anyone and cannot be taken out of the library because it might get lost or it might get damaged so what we do we photocopy the pages that we want from this book in the library itself and take the photocopy with us and while the original book remains in the library itself so this is what a cell does consider a nucleus to be a library which houses the most important book in uh, within it which is the dna so the part of the dna that we need so, uh, is photocopied because this dna cannot go out of the nucleus since it might get lost or damaged so we only photocopy the part of the book part of the dna that we need and that photocopy is known as mrna so this dna is converted into the mrna while the original dna it resides in the nucleus itself and the mrna can come out of the nucleus to carry the message forward so mrna it stands for messenger ribonucleic acid as the name suggests it is a messenger it carries the information from the dna in the nucleus to the cell's cytoplasm so if we look at its structure uh, you might remember that dna has a double helical structure and contains four bases unlike dna the rna it has only one strand it is single stranded always and it has it also has four bases except the fact that instead of thymine in the dna rna contains uracil rest three bases are same now the question is how is this mrna made how is this uh, uh, dna photocopied in uh, with in the form of the mrna so the mrna is made from dna by a process that we call as transcription because the nucleus resides in uh, because the dna resides in the nucleus transcription also occurs inside the nucleus only 
and this transcription it is carried out by a special molecule called rna polymerase so this rna polymerase it makes a photocopy of the dna in the form of the mrna and that mrna then leaves the nucleus Now that we have the photocopy of the uh, instructions that we need, now the question is how are these instructions uh, converted into the particular trait? So we need some worker molecules that will make these instructions into the final product. So we need some worker molecules, and within our cell, the worker molecules are the proteins. so proteins are the ones that carry all the functions that um, that actually make up a particular trait in the organism we uh, usually uh, associate proteins with the food stuff like we have always learned that proteins are the food that give us um, energy that make us strong well that's true but the function of protein is not limited to just that only they perform functions way more much than that they are uh, really hard working molecules within our body and they perform all the functions they perform various different functions within the cell let's have a look at some of the functions for example they are involved in the delivery of the molecules within the body for example consider hemoglobin hemoglobin is a protein that is responsible for the transport of oxygen within the body they also help in communication they communicate the signals from one part of the body to another part of the body for example hormones they protect us from the infections they fight the pathogens they fight the germs and give us protection give us immunity for example antibodies they also help us in the movement and give support to us for example muscle proteins and we uh, many much more functions now what are these proteins made of proteins are made of building blocks which we call as amino acids so these amino acids they are tiny little molecules that are really essential for life so they combine together end to end and make a stretch of protein and these uh, amino acids they are linked by a special connection which is known as peptide bonds so these amino acids they make a stretch of proteins joined by the peptide bonds now what are these amino acids in our body we have 20 different amino acids consider english alphabet so in english alphabet we have 26 different letters which make up millions of words by different combination similarly these 20 amino acids by different com combinations by different lengths they make up millions and millions of proteins that are present in the organism now if we look at the structure of the proteins the structure can be compared to that of the alphabet for example alphabets when combined together they form words and which when combined together form sentences and then form paragraphs similarly consider alphabets to be amino acids so these amino acids they are the primary structure which when combined together form the secondary structure and then tertiary and then quaternary structure so these tertiary structure and the quaternary structure they are the actual functional part of the protein they are the actual functional form of the protein so they give the actual function to the protein now how are these proteins made proteins are made in the cytoplasm of the cell by a process that we call as translation uh just like the mrna is made by a special molecule called rna polymerase proteins are made by a special molecule called ribosome ribosomes are also called as protein making factories so what does this ribosome do ribosome it reads the instructions it reads the message that mrna has got from the nucleus and converts this message in the form of the amino acids now if we compare with this an analogy if 
our dna is a cookbook it has uh, instructions it has various different recipes it has various different genes and those genes then are photocopied in the form of mrna and then this mrna is read by the ribosome just like a recipe is read by the chef who then translates it to the dish similarly this recipe is read by the ribosome which then translates it to the protein so the message from the mrna is read by the ribosome and this reading it is in such a way that three letters are read at a time that means three letters of mrna are read at a time and the ribosome incorporates one amino acid for it for example for aug ribosome will read as meth and will incorporate methionine amino acid just like mrna has a start signal and a stop signal for its synthesis protein also has a start site and a stop site in the mrna the start site is known as start codon which is usually aug and a stop signal which are, is uaa and two other stop codons and these three letters they are called as codons and these codons they make the basis for genetic code so you might have ever written a secret message to one of your friends wherein you might uh, have uh, coded your message to keep the message secret right consider uh, for example morse code so morse code is a code that contains uh, dots and dashes and those dots and dashes can be then converted into the usual language for example these three dots three dashes and three dots it is a morse code for sos similarly genetic code is based on the same set of principles except the fact that instead of dots and dashes it uses the four bases as its code and these bases they are converted in the form of amino acids now that we have learned that we have dna as our ultimate instruction guide and that dna it forms mrna by a process called transcription which then forms protein by a process called translation so this flow of information from the dna to the protein it is known as central dogma and it was given by francis crick in 1958 so uh, according to this dogma according to this uh, rule dna it's the ultimate instruction guide all the information that an organism has it is present within the dna and that information it is converted to mrna which then forwards the message to the ribosome and ribosome then decodes the message from the mrna in the form of proteins so we have our genes genes form proteins and different proteins can combine together to form a particular function now since all the cells have same dna like my skin cells will have the same dna as my heart cells will have so how do heart cells differ from skin cells what makes them different why are heart cells different from those of the neurons even if the instructions are present in same in all well the answer lies in the fact how the gene functions are regulated so within our cell not all the dna is coded at a time so cells use only those genes that they need for instance in the heart cell only those genes are uh, used that make the heart muscles and the genes that make for example neurons they are locked away and they are not used in the heart cell so for making uh, this particular function regulated there are special regulatory mechanism within our body that make sure that every cell performs its function and it makes sure for example our uh, rbcs only carry oxygen macrophages engulf the foreign pathogens granulocytes they fight the foreign infections and uh, uh, so much more so this regulatory mechanism is really important for example what if there was no regulation 
Consider the example of eye cell and a stomach cell. Both have the same DNA. But if there were no regulatory mechanism, for example, eye cell would have read the instructions of the stomach cell. And what will be the effect? The eye cells will start producing HCl, hydrochloric acid, which is used for digesting food. So now if it would have gone this way, eye cells will produce acid and the results will be disastrous. So to prevent such outcomes, all the regulations, they are really, really well controlled. So in our cells, uh, in a, within our DNA, some part of the DNA is non-coding, like it never codes for anything. And in fact, 98% of the DNA is non-coding and it does not code for anything. And some part of the DNA is inactive. For example, in eye cells, the, uh, the part of the DNA that codes for HCL is kept inactive. And some part is active and that is coding. So, genes are turned on and off depending upon the need. For example, in eye cells, HCL genes will be turned off and in heart cells, uh, brain cells, brain genes will be turned off and likewise. So to make sure these, there are proteins which are called as regulatory proteins. For example, there is a regulatory protein called uh, positive, trans positive transcription factor. So this positive transcription factor, for example, it tells the uh, RNA polymerase that we need this gene. So you have to read this. So when RNA polymerase reads the gene, it turns the gene on. And the negative regulatory factor, on the other hand, it tells the RNA polymerase that we do not need this gene. So the gene is turned off. For example, in eye cells, the, uh, there is a negative regulatory uh, protein present which tells the RNA polymerase that we do not need the gene for HCL. So do not make HCL. So the gene for HCL will be turned off. So for each cell, there is a particular set of genes that are kept active. For example, in muscle cells, one set of genes will be active. In intestinal cells, another set of genes will be active. And these specific set of genes that are active in within a cell, they give the specific function, they give the specific characteristic to the cell. So it is these genes, these expression of the genes that make the cell who they are. For example, they, they make what bone cells will be. This gene expression will make what skin cells are, is going to be. So this proper gene regulation, it results in the proper cell function. And when every cell functions properly, we can be healthy and happy. Thank you so much. I hope you all have understood and enjoyed as well. Happy to take any questions. Thank you.